All right, that was great. So now that I'm back inside, I wanted to continue where we left off. If you'll remember last time I mentioned that we we're gonna to try to use this lightweight charts library to add a candlestick chart to our UI and just start sketching out the UI a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna start very simple in this video and then we'll add on to it over time. I don't wanna spend too much time on UI yet, but I wanna figure out how to add this chart library to our web page. So if you remember last time uh, we had a file here and index.html, and all we're doing is uh, connecting to WebSocket, and we're streaming out this price data, and then we're displaying and appending the Bitcoin prices to our web page. So in addition to that, let's see if we can go ahead and include some type of chart here. So I am going to stop this uh, stream for a bit. So I'm gonna comment this out for a minute, uh, all of this WebSocket stuff, and let's just focus on the charting aspect. So what we'll do here is uh, I'm gonna include a new JavaScript at the end here, and I'm gonna say source equals uh, chart.js, and we're gonna create a new file called chart.js, just so, because I know we're gonna have a lot of JavaScript, I wanna include it in a separate file. So I'll do a new file, and I'll call it chart.js, right? And here we'll just put all of our JavaScript for lightweight charts, and we're gonna include it at the bottom of the page. All right, so I'm gonna look at lightweight charts here and see how we get the library and learn more. Um, so it links to a GitHub page, right? It looks like you can in install it as a node package to access these imports, or there's a CDN, which is con uh, Content Distribution Network, and so you can just include this URL straight up. So um, just to make it simple for everyone, um, I'm gonna use, use it in this fashion. So what you can do is add a script tag so script in your head, you just do script source equals, and then just include that script. And then you'll have lightweight charts included, and it's just hosted on another uh, on another host. It's already hosted here and ready to go, right? And then we have this chart JS here, which where we'll put our JavaScript that's custom. And you'll see uh, they provided an example here of um, how to initialize this chart. So I am going to take that, let's see, yeah, let's take that and let's just put it in our chart, chart.js. So I'm gonna paste that in there. And so we have chart equals, so it looks like you create a new chart and you give it a width and a height and you choose where it's added on the page. So it's using document.body here, uh, which will erase our other stuff in the body. So what I wanna do is create a new div just for the chart and I'll call it ID equals chart. And let's see if I can just say, instead of document.body, I'm gonna do document.getElementById chart. And I'll just pass it the ID of our chart element. And then, yeah, let's just add this default line series that they include out of the box. And then later we'll replace this data with our, our data from Binance. So let's just see if this renders and see if we have any errors. All right, so I'm gonna refresh that. And look at that, we already have this line chart here. Uh, with some data, it doesn't look exactly like we want it to look yet, but very promising. We've already included the uh, charting library, Lightweight Charts. It's already on our web page, and it's already displaying some price data, which is which is great. That's a great, great start. So um, let's see if we can change this up a little bit. Um, see if we can add it as a candlestick chart. So let's look at our examples here, and let's see what a candlestick chart looks like. So I'm going to click their examples for candlestick chart. And it'll look a little bit different. Uh, and it looks like you can do, yeah, so I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put it in a temporary file real quick just so I can study it. So it looks like they do time, open, high, low, and close. And then also it has a lot of scale information. Uh, we should probably just take this one actually inst instead as our example. So uh, I'm gonna go back to chart.js and let's try this one. Create chart, and then we'll do document.getElementById again, and we'll use chart there. And let's just use the actual style uh, that we're using, right? And there you go, I refreshed it, and now I have a zoomable candlestick chart, which is in our web page. And then I can also refresh our page, and let's say I want to reconnect to this WebSocket and I also want to uh, append price data to my trade div. And I can get that going again. And then what we're gonna wanna do 
is uh, start interacting with our chart and we're going to append this price data to this candlestick series and we're going to gradually hook that up. Um, I'm not quite ready to do that. I don't really feel like doing that yet. So I'm going to comment this back out uh, and I'm not as much in the UI mode at the moment. So I just want to get this started so that we can move on to the Python portion. Okay, next let's put in some placeholders on the UI to accept some user input. Let's say the user wants to configure some indicators they're interested in uh, on their custom, on this uh, custom trading platform, right? And so uh, under the trades div, let's do an, an ID for settings. And this will be a place to store all of our settings, right? And so I'll do an H3 and just say settings, right? And then here, let's just put some, some options the user can configure. And let's say this is thing is gonna hold some indicators that the user is interested in. So I'm gonna say input type equals text. And let's say a label. And let's say, you know, we have a simple RSI indicator, right? So that's RSI. Um, and we can, let's just add another div there just to give it a little bit of room, right? So we have an RSI setting, right? And so let's see what the settings look like in trading view, for instance, and we can just uh, make this kind of work similarly. So I'm gonna go to markets on trading view. I'm gonna go to Bitcoin and then let's click this guy. And then let's look at the full featured chart. So you see, uh, I have this RSI indicator already up. So I'm gonna close it real quick and then I'm gonna add it back. So I'm gonna click F of X here or this yeah, indicators and strategies button. And then if I do relative strength index, right, that'll add it to my chart. And you see we have this RSI oscillator on the chart and maybe we'll figure out how to add that to the chart visually. But I, I'm mainly interested in the settings they let you configure. And so let's see. So over here I hover, click the little gear and it looks like they let you set a couple inputs. You can do the length or the source um, so I'll just let it us do the length, right? So I'll do uh, name equals uh, RSI length and then ID, oops. And then I'll give it an ID to ID equals RSI length, right? And that'll just be a setting. And let's say we also need, want a checkbox to say we're interested in using this indicator. So I'll just do input type equals checkbox. Um, and I'm going to save a lot of the details for a bit, for a little bit later. I just want to sketch out the baseline for a UI, right? So we got a checkbox here. Um, and I'm just going to put them all on one line. So I'm just going to do uh, RSI. And then I'll put next to it the check checkbox. So I'll put checkbox. Then I'll put the RSI. And then I'll put the text box right next to it, like that. And then let's just do it all in one line, right? So I'm interested in the RSI, right? And I can type like a 14 there. So I can do like a placeholder equals 14, right? So that'll be a setting for the period, right? And I believe there should be an overbought, oversold. So they're using 30 and 70. Um, so also make a little input for type equals text. And I'll call this ID equals RSI oversold. And then I'll do name equals RSI oversold. And then I'll do placeholder equals 30. And that'll be like a threshold. This below 30 is when it's oversold. And then I'll also do input type equals text ID equals RSI overbought. Right. And then placeholder equals 70. So let's say we just have this configurable RSI uh, indicator component that's on our UI. The user can tweak whether or not they want to use it, what the period is, and the overbought and oversold thresholds, right? And let's put a label there, overbought or oversold and overbought. And I will put I want to put overbought on top. Let's see that. All right, cool. So we have a few settings here and we have a chart. And so 
feeling pretty good about that. So I'm not gonna hook this all up yet. What I wanna do is start working on a backend for this. So I'm gonna use Python and do the same thing, try to connect to the WebSockets. But also I'm going to explore the REST API for Binance in the next video, download some historical data and actually use RSI and some other indicators from TALib. And then uh, you hook that up into Backtrader to backtest those indicators against some historical data. And then we're gonna tie that all together by hooking up this UI to the real data and to the Binance API to play some trades. So I think that's it for this video. So stay tuned for the next one and we're gonna dive into some Python.